Hi, Josh. Hi, Nancy. I had a chance to watch The Loneliest Whale, The Search of, or for 52. Um, you made me cry. I did not anticipate to cry at the end. Oh, good. It was like one of those sad moments, but then there was like good news, you know, the good news, the happy tears in a way. Yeah, those are the best. How did you feel when you got that news? I don't know if we can really talk about what news it was. Um, Oh, no, I think as long as we as long as we talk about it in the general sense, you know, happy tears as well. I think you know it was a it was a very much a surprise, but I, and 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 you know in some ways it was the perfect ending to the story. Hopeful. Are you by any chance um, currently trying to I don't know initiate another trip out there, or did you pretty much just left it as is? Uh, right now, I think our, our biggest goal that we want to do is we want to um, now kind of change, uh, work on shipping. Uh, basically, I think that there's some things that we can do in terms of slowing ships down in that area. Um, if we could slow ships uh, 10 knots, basically, uh, you can lower uh, carbon emissions, you can prevent more ship strikes, and you can lower ocean noise pollution. And there's a bunch of programs that are going on in that area right now where they're trying to incentivize shipping companies to slow down and in doing so enact all those things. It's incredible. Like I'm actually based in LA, grew up out here, and I did not know that LA, or I guess you can say Long Beach port is like the yeah. busiest one in the United States. Yeah, it's huge. I had no idea either until like I went and saw it from the sea. And I think, you know, that's the whole interesting thing. I've lived in LA as well and you know sure I go down to San Pedro but you know like you just don't really understand or know um how big the, the world that's kind of on the other side if you will until you're actually in boats and things like that and that's I think some of the interesting perspectives of the film you know we have no idea what's under the ocean until we actually take a look and so I think it's about both looking and listening not only that, but also the how much we're polluting the water. I mean, it's it's the irony and coincidence. I hit Long Beach, um, the beach yesterday for the first time, although I'm here. But you know, the geography, since you've lived out here, it's kind of like it's far. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I went for the first time with the plan of just, you know, wonder and just go check it out. And I walked towards the water kind of like, oh, I want to feel how cold it is. It's probably cold. I didn't have the courage to step in. The water was just not, I mean, it's a port. I mean, yeah. all sorts of stuff is out there. And yeah. in this case, it's polluting this, these beautiful creatures from the ocean. Yeah, it is, it is not a good, not a good scene at all. So, you know, I think it's just important to kind of learn and realize all about that. Now, I saw the discouragement when you had, they came out, in this case, during the journey of the seven days of trying to find 52, um, whenever they came across one of those shipment ships and yeah. distraught, and it's, that that's a big eye-opener. You, you, your documentary did a big eye-opener in that aspect. Yeah, I had no idea uh, about ocean noise pollution um, until I really worked on this documentary. I had no idea about ship noise uh, and the extent of ship noise until I uh, watched this documentary and, and until I made this documentary. And then suddenly it kind of it really opened up my eyes to what was going on. And that these ships actually are killing some of these whales on the way. I thought whales would just kind of go move away, but yet they're, I mean, it's so sad. That was so heartbreaking because you got some really good footage displaying that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's 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 a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, but yes, um, unfortunately, uh, animals and these whales and the way that they're feeding, they don't quite know that, you know, these ships are barreling down upon them and they're they, they don't they can't get away quick enough. What was it that told you I have to do this? It's a good question. I think it was the reactions of when I first told people the story of the loneliest whale. Uh, it was just so fascinating to see people have this reaction. Uh, sometimes they would cry. Sometimes they would 
you know, their faces would go blank when I told them the story of this lonely whale. And uh, I think that was what started it and what made me want to kind of delve into why people had these, these reactions. Um, and from that, uh, I, I kind of knew that it was an important story to tell. You had someone mention um, that the, the, the whale's not lonely. It's stories about all of us. Yeah. That was just like, wow, that's, that's where it's coming from. How yeah, I mean, relate what, at a moment. What, one of the reveals is that it, it's, we're prescribing loneliness theoretically onto this animal. This animal may not be lonely or the way that we think about loneliness. You know, the idea is that we hear this story and we anthropomorphize it. You know, we, we, we place that emotion onto this animal. And so that's a real interesting idea. And, you know, the animal 52 isn't lonely. We are. That's really sad. <laughs> that's really sad. Now we're speaking about, um, you know, 52 now really being lonely, but yeah, you kept the title. Why yeah. The title. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, well, you know, I mean, that is how most people know, of, know of 52. Uh, they know him as the loneliest whale in the world. And that's like the meme that everybody knows about. So, uh, you know, I think it's, it's a point of identification, but then the film takes, you know, all this time to kind of ask, is he really lonely? Mm -hmm. Now, um, one of my favorite, two of my favorite characters in here were the Johns. <laughs> yeah, mine I too. Think they were so great and they're passionate about, you know, being out in the ocean and, you know, just the creatures in the ocean. Can you tell me about working with them? Yeah, they were two of, the, literally, of two of the best uh, scientists in the world when it comes to um, whales and, and bioacoustics bioacoustics. Um, John Hildebrand is from Scripps um, and he's the head of the bioacoustics lab there. Um, and he has sonar buoys that are listening stations all over uh, Southern California so that he can listen. And he happened to have heard 52 and, you know, allowed us to kind of go on our expedition. Um, he, um, like I said, is one of the premier bioacousticians, works in issues of ocean noise pollution. Um, and, and how whales communicate, and most recently has been doing a lot of work with regards to the um, bioacoustic impact of wind farms um, along the coast. Um, as you know, there's going to be a lot of wind farms, theoretically, that are going to be in Santa Barbara and uh, Cal all along the California coast. And so they want to make sure that they're not creating more ocean noise and that it's going to be, you know, the impact is going to be as low as possible. Which John is this again? Now that's John Hildebrand. Okay. Now there's John C. John C is the guy who looks like, you know, old man in the ocean. You know, he looks like a captain. And what's really cool about John C is that, you know, I would be sitting with him on these boats out in the middle of nowhere, just kind of like sitting, you know, and we'd be talking. And he spends like a crazy amount of days per year out in the middle of the ocean. Uh, hanging out with the whales. And, and to me, I think he spends more time out on the ocean than he does on land. And I just found that to be really interesting. What a fascinating character, the fact that he's devoted all his time. And it was really interesting because when we put the whole film together, um, everybody was like, oh, you have to get John C. You have to get John C. If you don't, you know, you don't really have it. And so I was very excited. By the time I got to filming, I was so excited that we had these unbelievable characters. Uh, I felt so blessed that we were able to kind of really get some of the best scientists in the world to help us. And that not just them, other guys like Bruce Mate from Marine Mammal Institute, Chris Clark from Cornell, um, Bob Ziak from NOAA. You know, Bob Ziak is, is, has solved huge mysteries of the ocean, like uh, the mysterious sound of the bloop. He solved that. Um, Anna, um, who you meet in uh, in the the expedition. So many fabulous uh, scientists. And I think also kind of very cool that there are a number of um, female scientists out there. So we're seeing like that change a little bit. I think that's coming to fruition. So I think that's good as well. 
Well, congratulations on this project. Thank you so much for your time. Like I said, I really enjoyed it. And one quote that I got from there just to end it, that by everything that's taking place, we're depriving these animals of their abilities to maintain their social systems. One of your people you interviewed said that, and that's something yeah. we definitely got to acknowledge. Yeah, well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You take care. Take care.